Uh huh. I was not. You you were. I was worried. I was. Guys. I call this uh, public hearing to order for the Village of Wellington Beach for Monday, March 28, 2016. Please call the roll. Trustee Husk. Here. Trustee Valadez. Here. Trustee Wallace. Here. Trustee Butler. Here. Trustee Mount. Here. Trustee Bennis. Here. Mayor Hill. Here. Let the record show a quorum is present. We have a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Butler, second by Trustee Wallace. We have a motion to second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's approved. Our only item of business uh, this, for this public hearing is our fiscal year budget for 2016-2017. And we'll have our finance director, Kevin Boiso, come up and do the presentation. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, uh, members of the board, and staff. Um, so the purpose of the uh, uh, today's hearing is uh, to take a look at the uh, proposed budget for fiscal year 2017. Uh, and the uh, budget would cover uh, from May 1st, 2016 through April 30th, 2017. Uh, before we get into the uh, numbers, we'd like to take uh, a look at what the financial planning and reporting process is. Um, additionally, we'll take a look at some of the budget challenges uh, or things that we have to keep an eye on for uh, fiscal year 2017, uh, which could affect the way we uh, the spending has been uh, allocated throughout the different funds. So. The first step is uh, taking a look at the, uh, the planning. The planning uh, stage of the, of the process it, uh, it consists of three things here. Uh, the first one is the uh, multi-year financial forecast, and that takes place between October and November. Uh, then we take a look at the uh, multi-year capital plan. Uh, again, that's around the same time. Uh, after we take a look at what the financial environment environment may look like, uh, then we can take a look at the capital plan. Um, and then where we are now is uh, during the, uh, the final step of the planning stage, which is the annual budget, and that takes place between November and March, uh, in which in, if the plan is to end basically today with the village board approval and then implementation. And then finally, we uh, throughout the year, throughout the fiscal year, we issue issue monthly treasure report, which are intended to give an idea of where we are um, on during the budget uh, year. So, uh, expenditures, revenues, and things that uh, whether we need to make any changes. This is where we kind of know. Um, we also have the um, annual report or the audit report, and these uh, the idea is they should come out around October. Uh, normally. Due to some issues, uh, we, we've had them in, come out in December, but um, it's still within the guidelines of the uh, state laws. Uh, some of the budget challenges that uh, we'll take a look at, um, these are uh, different issues that are going on throughout the economy, uh, social changes, and that eventually become budget challenges because they will impact the way that our spending plan uh, will take place during the fiscal year. Uh, for example, we'll take a look at what happened with the state of, with the state of Illinois not having their, uh, their fiscal year budget passed. Uh, then we'll, we'll take a look at those items. But these are some of the bu budget challenges that we will uh, go into more depth uh, over the next couple of minutes. So we have the state finances, the pension costs uh, being a big, big thing right now, especially with uh, the city of Chicago, you know, being downgraded today uh, due to the courts uh, overruling what they had proposed in uh, changing the way that they calculate pensions. So uh, the idea is if villages are trying to do as much as they can to control the cost, but there, there are laws in Illinois that, you know, prevent from, uh, from management or the village to take a lot of actions to control that cost. 
Uh, then we also take a look at the facility replacement, uh, sustaining the employees that we have, and then the property value decreases. How do these become budget challenges for us in fiscal year 2017? Uh, the first one is the economic environment of, of the state. So as you may know, uh, the state still doesn't have a fiscal year 2016 budget. Uh, they have talked about fiscal year 17 budget without even having a uh, fiscal year 16 <coughs> budget approved. So that definitely will have a, an effect on how the village has budgeted for certain budget items that, are, uh, that come through the state. Um, so to give you an example of what happened in fiscal year 2016, uh, they withheld some of the funds for the first four to six months, and that included uh, 450,000 of uh, MFT, uh, 87,000 of use tax, and some video gaming. The total of that came out to 558,000. So during the first couple of months, the village didn't, uh, didn't see this money come through where we had passed the budget based on that amount of money coming in. Uh, the idea is that w the village would have to use cash flow in order to bridge the gap of not getting the, the funding. Uh, due to you know the Illinois Municipal League and um, other uh, governmental agencies and organizations, then they were, they were able to pass a law that released those funds. And now you know those funds are up to Basically, they're, they're up to date, even though the state hasn't passed the budget. But that just gives you an idea of how that will affect. As soon as we pass the budget, then departments go out and start doing the bid because the bidding on, on different projects, because it, uh, these are projects that are going to be completed mid-year. So we're counting on these funds to come through. Uh, the next one, uh, these are proposed laws that we still don't know what's going to happen. Uh, the property tax freeze, we tried to address this issue during the tax levy. Uh, however, at that time, it, it didn't seem to be the best, uh, best way for us to increase the tax levy uh, for a rate that would not be uh, acceptable to the, to the residents. So that's why this may be an issue where if the state passes the law that would freeze the rates, then we would have to find other ways to uh, make up the, the flexibility that we would have. Say if the police, uh, uh, police pension, the annual required contribution increases, then we, ha we don't have that much flexibility to increase any other um, items or purposes within the tax levy because it would be frozen. So again, we don't know what's going to happen. The law hasn't passed yet, um, and it, it, it keeps being postponed. So it may affect us in fiscal year 17, it may not, depending on what the state does. Uh, the next one again is uh, the income tax re uh, reduction. Uh, right now the, villages, the village budgets about 2.8, 2.9 million dollars a year in uh, income tax that are basically uh, shared through the state. And uh, the state is looking at, at a 50% uh, reduction that would mean that uh, $1.4 million would just uh, disappear from the budget, which again, right now we're budgeting 2.9. So if this actually happens, the village would definitely feel the, uh, this, this reduction. Again, something we gotta keep an eye on. Uh, it's proposed right now. Uh, we don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, then the next challenge we, uh, I just mentioned is the increase uh, uh, pension cost. Uh, these graphs here shows basically the uh, what has happened over the last five to seven years on uh, when it comes to the pension costs. And it's a sizable amount of our expenditures that does include the IMR, IMRF and police pension costs. Uh, so as of fiscal year 2017, we're budgeting uh, close to $1.3 million. Again, it's a large expenditure out of the operating fund. Uh, challenges uh, related to the facility replacement, we all know that at some point this building will need some uh, fixing, will need some rec re, um, reconstruction. So planning for this is key for, for us. And that has to, you know, one of the things that we've done this year is including a new fund in there where we're attempting to uh, plan for these. So if we were to do everything this year to uh, kind of catch up, then we would, um, replacement that's needed for prior years where there was nothing allocated uh, would require close to $910,000 uh, for us to put aside. 
Uh, on top of that, every year we would need to budget about 240000 for depreciation. This year we're budgeting close to 120000 out of these depreciation. So it's a starting point, and the, the plan is that eventually we'll get there. Uh, and then replacement going forward. So in reviewing all the items that the village owns, all the buildings, everything, uh, based on depreciation schedules and uh, life ex useful life of these items, uh, we expect that over the next five fiscal years, there'll be a requirement of $1.3 million, or $1.2 million, I'm sorry, uh, to, uh, for replacement over the next five years again. So. Uh, and then maintaining the employee base, uh, we're budgeting for 77 full-time equivalent employees. Uh, how do we uh, make sure that these are, this is a sustainable employee base? It's, you know, with average salary increases of 2.5%. Uh, health and dental insurance keeps increasing based on different, uh, you know, the marketplace. We just talked about going out to market and get a quote on these. Uh, same thing with workers' comp. We're trying pretty much everything we can on on all of these costs, but a lot of the a lot of these items are market driven, so uh, our control is basically planned for those items. How um, how is the village responding to these? Uh, you know, again, we talked about uh, financial forecasting. This will give us a, an idea of what could happen over the next two three years. Uh, that allows for the village for village management and the village board to take action if, if we see that there is something um, that could affect our finances, that we could take actions right now instead of waiting until then. Uh, same thing with the multi-year capital planning. And then our operating f philosophy has uh, always been you know, cross-training, uh, and we're trying to do that a little bit more now. Efficiencies, implementing the technology that we, that we uh, go out and purchase, uh, making sure that it's being used to the fullest potential. Uh, looking at different options on how to accomplish the job, taking a look at whether we need to do it in-house or hire somebody else to do it. And then also having very conservative uh, financial policies like the fund balance policy that we have. Uh, having that 65% uh, fund balance policy comes into play a lot when uh, you have uncertainty at the state level and also you have claims that are uh, that sometimes need to be processed, which we experienced during, during fiscal year 2016. Uh, now, going into the actual numbers, uh, the total balance budget, again, balance meaning revenues matches expenditures, so there is no uh, you know, negative amount. If we do have anything, it's use of fund balance, which, again, with the financial forecast, we can kind of, for, uh, we can kind of see Two three years before we need we need to spend anything. Uh, total budget is thirty four million. Uh, budgeting for seventy seven full time equivalent employees. Uh, most of that uh, funding is for operating, and then most of the operating budget is for salaries and benefits. As you can tell, there is a there is a lot of uh, contractual services in there included because that's how we make sure that we're getting the best for service for our residents at the lowest possible cost. And then a little bit over uh, $820,000 for commodities. So that includes the salt purchases, the supplies, the uh, copy paper, all of that stuff It's in there. Uh, financing expenses of $2.5 million, and that has to do with the uh, bonds and the interest that's paid on that, on those bonds. Uh, the reason for the increase, again, is because we issue a new bond these, um, uh, this fiscal year, so that's included in there. Uh, but at the same time, with the f uh, forecasting and the planning that had been done uh, before my time, uh, the village was able to budget $985,000 to cover some of these uh, interest costs. And then the most of the other ten uh, ten million dollars for capital outlay that it does include the. Uh, uh, again, the roads, the water tower, uh, a lot of the uh, capital grants that we're getting for through IDA, those are included in here. And then all the, the interfund transfers, so transfer from the general fund operating into, uh, say, equipment replacement, uh, risk management, that's all $4.7 million uh, total. That's, again, for all the different funds, water and sewer, and then general, uh, general fund. 
Uh, two new things that are included in the budget, the uh, facility replacement fund, Fund 223, and then the uh, um, capital pl uh, projects fund of 142. Uh, the plan for uh, fiscal year 2017, capital plan, and the bonds, this is more to kind of as a reminder what why this is included in there. Uh, there was a lot of uh, very good decisions made on the bo on the side of the board about uh, at least from what we're looking at, you know, with the interest costs that we're seeing, uh, with the fact that on a per unit basis the cost to redo the roads it's coming in a lot lower uh, than what we had expected. So some of the benefits of moving the the capital plan two years uh, was, uh, you know, the village was able to maintain its uh, good uh, or high quality and low risk. Uh, credit rating of AA2. Uh, the bond refunding, uh, if you take the, that, the savings over the next 10 years, then that will be 240000 So the, the way that this will be ex seen through the village finances is every year in interest costs, it will be about $24,000 less in interest that we'll pay. Uh, and then due to the high quality of the bonds, we were the village was able to uh, net $399,000 more uh, than what it went out to market for. As far as the timeline goes, uh, you know, the Village Board made the decision in uh, November of 2015 to move the plan forward. Uh, then where we are now, it's basically we, oops, I'm sorry about that. We're including it on the, uh, on the fiscal year 2017 bond our budget, and then um, the the plan is that by Q1 of 2017, we would be pretty much done with uh, redoing the roads, and it would be more of the punch list items to be uh, covered by then. So, uh, revenue summary: uh, most of the uh, revenues come through the tax collection, so this does include property tax. Uh, state sales tax, income tax, uh, replacement tax. That's all included in here, and that's about $13.3 million. Then 1% uh, comes through licenses and permits. That's about $369,000. Uh, fines, another 1%. Intergovernmental revenue, this includes grants, and that's uh, 2%. Miscellaneous revenues, those are the fines and fees and uh, the the donations and that's less than one percent. Uh, charges for services that's about four point seven million and that's fourteen percent. That's all related to the water and or most of it's related to the water and sewer fund, and that's for water sales. And then the fees is one percent. Uh, the other financing sources this time around it's a big chunk of the pie due to the uh, bond being issued. And then the interfund transfers again about four million, and that's transferring from the two main operating funds into the smaller funds. Uh, on the expenditure side, uh, salaries and benefits make the most of it. Uh, contractual services, nineteen percent. Uh, the next uh, biggest item in there is the capital outlay, again related to the uh, to the capital plan, and then the interfund inter interfund transfers out. Now, when you look at the budget level uh, at each separate fund, this graph is basically intended f if you're going to compare these to the audit. This is the slide that you would compare. You, we have the village has 16 different funds or purposes for the whole 34 million, and that's split into these uh, separate funds here, included the uh, uh, under governmental, it's the general fund, and then under enterprises, the water and sewer fund. Uh, then the, the this graph, it's mainly a um, net of transfers. So this is supposed to give you the idea of what's truly the budgeted amount. So revenues and expenditures, if you were to look at it uh, from an ordinance perspective, that's $29 million because it takes the transfers out um, or they're removed from the budget. And that's why the $29 million they, you'll see as compared to the uh, $34 million that I had included before. Um, when it comes to operating, uh, the under the operating budget, you'll see that the police and public works takes most of it. So the police is 54% and then public works is 29%.
with the remaining amount uh, going to administration, finance, uh, mayor's office, legislative, and all of the other departments. Uh, these will be uh, the amounts comparing it to the prior fiscal year budget. So the increase overall is only 5%. Again, that has a lot to do with the uh, salaries uh, increasing, also the benefits as well. Uh, that's, that's included in there. Transfers out are separated for comparison purposes. Um, some of the financial challenges that are included in here, again, we talked about the state of Illinois. Um, rebuilding the fund balance is key for us. Uh, declining the water sales, something that we have addressed during our meetings. Uh, decreasing property values. Uh, this basically shows a um, kind of what has happened with each property for uh, taxation purposes. Over the last, uh, you know, since fiscal year 2010, there has been a 34% decrease in property value. We're starting to see that the decrease is not as high as we, um, or as we had seen it before. So the hope is that we're, go we're getting back to kind of in a stable uh, environment now with when it comes to uh, property values. Uh, in conclusion, uh, during the fiscal year 2017 uh, proposed budget, we're uh, planning to maintain the sustainable workforce, uh, make sure that we all the projects and all the uh, different recommendations that were made through the middle managers, they are tracked and implemented, and then also make sure that the capital plan um, is fully uh, completed by the end of the fiscal year. Are there any questions? I do apologize that I went a little bit quicker on those slides because timing, so <laughs> I apologize about that too. Well, if there are no questions, uh, thank you, uh, Mayor uh, and the staff for the help on the putting the budget together too. So.